Welcome back to the Fast Lane with Ryan, except this episode is a little bit different. You can actually see me. The show where I drive in the fast lane, I'm just leaving work. I've got a pretty long drive home. Well, not that long, about 10 miles on the freeway. But I take the fast lane because, well, it's faster. And in this, we're going to be continuing on something we were talking about in a gardening episode. We did a gardening episode on Lutheran Christology. And in that, uh, you'll see a comment from Connor Longafee in there. Um, I would encourage you, even if you don't go and watch the video, simply go to the video and see the comment left by Connor Longafee, who is a good friend of mine. So, this video will largely be picking up on the last, and uh, if you are totally unfamiliar to the controversy between the Reformed and Lutherans on Christology. I would recommend checking out some resources on that. But without further ado, here I go in most probably misrepresenting Lutherans again because Connor and I had a pretty good discussion where he explained where I misrepresented things, uh, where I got things right, and I think I have a better understanding. And I don't want to misrepresent anybody. Connor here is the same Lutheran that I interviewed for my channel. You can go dig and see an uh, interview with the Lutheran vicar behind all the freaking stupid sleep streams. Yes, I do those because people watch them. That's the answer to that question. And I'm only answering it because I get asked why I do those a lot. Anyway... I brought up the I brought up the question. Okay. The assertion is that this presence is illocal is what I said last time. And my concern was sort of if the way Christ's humanity is omnipresent everywhere is the same manner namely the divine mode of presence we talked about the communication of attributes a little bit in the last episode and now we're switching lanes into the fast lane here's where the real episode starts now we're in the fast lane and these people are going too slow I'm, I'm going to get close to them. Like, close enough where they should know they should be going faster, but not close enough to cause an accident. But, I had some discussions. Like, okay, uh, as far as I uh, previously understood it, the human nature now has the attributes which belong to the divine and can exercise them as... Or in as the human nature. So, um, as far as I understand it, um, Christ is present everywhere in his human nature. However, not present in the way that humans are normally present. Uh, it's a presence that is communicated to him. All right, uh, sorry, there's a cop up here, so I'm a little bit distracted. And mainly because these, idi these idiots are going below the speed limit in a fast lane right next to a cop. How else do you want to get pulled over? Go faster. Uh, I hope the cop gets on his microphone and just goes, Please go faster. Now, my registration may be expired, but like... That's okay. Well, no, it's not because I'm working on I, 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 I. It's expired by accident. Oh, the cop's right behind me now. Alright, episode of the fast lane with being directly behind a cop. If I change lanes, it's sketchier than if I don't. So I'm going to permit the a police officer. going to get in the same lane as the officer, just to be extra not sketchy. Oh, 
If I'm breaking the speed limit the same way the cop is, it's fine. Wow. I'm great at staying on topic, aren't I? Anyway, it was clarified to me that um, the communication of attributes discussion and the discussion of the Lord's Supper should not be confused or seen as the same thing. So, the way I sort of had it explained to me, and this is still in open question format, just kind of thinking out loud, is that Christ is present. And I, 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 okay, I'm, let me start by saying, um, the concern was, can we say that this is true body and blood if it's a spiritual rather than a physical presence, right? And my concern was that the Lutheran view was that the supper basically communicated the body of Jesus that is technically everywhere, but it was explained to me that the language of the body of Christ, referring to his body in the sacrament, is reserved for the sacrament. It was explained to me that the Lutheran scholastics never stated that is bodily omnipresent or omnipresent in the way the supper is. And it was explained to me that Lutherans reject the doctrine of a change in the elements. As in going from bread and wine to body and blood. And I learned also in this that Lutherans, according to... Now, my research is not perfect, and again, I, I, the qualifier is correct me if I say anything wrong. My concern was basically um, a materializing of what is already everywhere present spiritually. And the whole point of uh, the emphasis of and, and importance of the real presence in the sacrament is, hey, this is the body that was broken for you. Hey, that, that atonement that was made, that atonement you need, here it is. Eat it. Drink it. Here's the man. Right? So, I fear to sort of, uh, I'm, I think I'm technically Roman Catholic right now in the sense that that's where I've been attending, and I went to confession and said, yo, so, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an ex-Roman Catholic, and I'm, I can't sign up to all the Roman Catholic stuff. And turns out neither do they. So I'm uh, camping there for right now, I guess. But anyway, it was explained that Lutherans reject transubstantiation. And to explain transubstantiation, which is where I can actually be a little bit more accurate and less misrepresent, less uh, risk of misrepresenting. Um, the substance of the bread and wine go, changes, actually, to the body and blood of Christ. There's actually a true change in substance. There is a actual becoming of body and blood. And as far as I understand, and as it was explained to me, Lutherans actually removed the Eucharistic prayers. Now, 
Let me explain a little what the Eucharistic prayers are. The East and the West, specifically in this case what I'm referring to, are the Roman Catholics and the Eastern Orthodox, have different views on when the consecration actually occurs, or when it goes from being ordinary bread and wine to the body and blood of Christ. And the West has defined that at the words, this is my body and this is my blood, Rome has said that it is when these words are spoken that the consecration occurs. Whereas the East would point to the consecration as either, as far as I understand it, no definitive moment or the whole all of the Eucharistic prayers together composing the consecration where the congregation and the priest pray for the Holy Spirit to come down and that the bread and wine would become the body and blood of Christ. And however, what Lutherans do state is that this is the body broken for you, and the one who receives it worthily is the one who believes that this is the body broken for you. Like the actual thing that was hanging on the cross. So no matter how into philosophy we might get, the central point I wanted to make in this video and clarifier is that while I still the questions are mainly I think can you consistently philosophically affirm this rather than what we're affirming because Lutherans along with Roman Catholics what, what denomination am I well I was a Roman Catholic, and then I was basically an old Catholic, well, Anglo-Catholic, Anglo old Catholic style thing, and my friend who's the best denomination reader says I'm an old Catholic, but we don't really have those in the U.S., but that's not the point. The point is, at the end, along with Lutherans, I, as a Catholic, and I mean, am I Roman Catholic? I don't know the answer to that yet. <laughs> I, really. But it depends. Like, are they, will, will they let me believe certain stuff <laughs> without kicking me out? <laughs> but um, at the end of the day, Regardless of all other points I've brought up, what matters is where people place their faith, not how philosophy works in a sacrament. And Lutherans very, very firm, very firmly affirm, firmly affirm. That was an awkward sentence. That the one who receives the supper worthily is the one who says, hey, the thing I'm eating, this is the body broken for me. The thing I'm drinking, this is the blood shed for me. And that's why transubstantiation was developed as a doctrine in order to safeguard the actual reception of the body and blood of Christ. And Lutherans, likewise, in their own context of Christological controversies with the Reformed, have set forth a doctrine to where they can are explained in their own philosophical framework how the Supper can truly be the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. But with these dialogues and with the disagreements in philosophy potentially that I already brought up still remaining, I think it is very safe to say that this belongs to the cat. Oh, it's a rabbit. I think that it is very safe to say that this belongs to the category of adiaphora. 
because if salvation is by metaphysical philosophy of how the mystery of salvation works, well, that sucks. Right? Like, wouldn't that suck? Obviously, if that's how it is, I can't change it, but, I mean, if I, you, okay, you read the New Testament. Go read the New Testament. And come out of there telling me that the same Jesus, like the same dude, actually the same person who was talking, people are going to be damned on the last day for being in the wrong tradition. Now, some of my friends that are Protestant, because I'm a Protestant, I'm a Catholic, I identify as a Protestant too, whatever. You want to know where I'm at denominationally? Everyone has really complex soteriological schemes, and I can't figure it out. So, um, Jesus rose from the dead, and that accomplished the thing, and it needs to be applied somehow. And I can't figure out, through all of the many brilliant scholastic scholars, who has it right about how it's applied, and with people claiming mutual exclusivity to how it's applied, and needing to understand, needing to agree that this is how it's applied to really be in the club, and lots of denomination hopping, I've realized that I just simply have to be a Christian. I know that sounds really, really watered down and dumb, but this is gonna sound kind of silly here. We're not in the fast lane anymore, we're home. But this is gonna sound silly. But the actual weekly reality of living the church life in any parish for the most part is going to be approximately the same. Or that's what I've experienced. All of the divisions and anathemas and, oh, this group isn't saved, this group isn't saved, most of that belongs to flyer with somebody trying to advertise a business. If you ever get a flyer advertising a small business, please pick it up, and if they have a website, visit it, just to, like, help rank them, because there are a lot of people trying to make it right now. But I've gotten way off topic. Um, central thesis is we... Now... Now, uh, uh, some people might ask, what, do you think you're saved by works now because you're, like, going to a Roman Catholic church? Have we ever met? It's a legitimate question if you don't know me that well, but... <laughs> not do I believe that we're saved by grace alone through faith alone yeah but it seems like Rome might be willing to grant that one I mean, they, they've got that joint declaration on justification and stuff, man. You know, I spent so long being edgy and tradition attached. You know what, maybe, may, maybe this is just me getting watered down. I don't know. This video has gone in very different directions than I expected it to. However... Oh! I know what I'll show you guys. I, I spent, as a lot of you know, I unfortunately spent a couple years not really caring about the things of God. So, 
we went from, yeah, Christianity might be true, who cares, to denominate. I went from religious apathy to denominational apathy. I feel like it's a step up. And my prayer life was pretty much dead until I picked up a rosary again. And I feel like it was... A lot of it was because I used to pray the rosary a lot, so it was, like, easy to get back into. But... If you don't have a rosary, you should get one for real, for real. I mean, if you're, like, a Protestant and not cool with the prayers to Mary... Um, you can just look up the Lutheran Rosary. Just, just look it up online. You'll find it. And then, for some reason, Anglican prayer beads are numbered different than a Dominican Rosary. So you need, so you need to get different beads. And I think they're in sets of seven called weeks instead of tens, decades. But anyway. I can't give a benediction, but I can pray for you all. I pray that you that the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your heart, mind, and soul this night and evermore in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.